Hi, I'm Cinnamon Coney, your archer, but and today I want to share with you something a little bit different. You'll notice this beautiful spring deer with the floral crown and watercolor, and next to it is the Cron d'Ache palette. I, a few months ago, was contacted by this charming third-year medical student, Aditya, and he said he was working on a new art material, a new way of watercoloring to solve problems that he was having while going through med school. I have a few friends that are doctors, and I know how intense that can be. And he sent me some test product. And he was working on these Viviva color sheets, which were really interesting. They're 16 colors designed for urban sketching. They're super saturated. They almost remind me of inks. Um, super fast drying. The color sheets are here. And you use like your watercolor brush, your water brush on here to pick it up, and then you paint with it. They're really amazing. There's these little protector pads that sort of help it dry and not leak through. The other cool thing is, and this is kind of bizarre and awesome to me, is the pigment. So see this pigment here? This is a luminous peacock blue. Go figure. But what he did is he created these sort of key code, color key code, so that you can use it. So he sent this to me. He's got an Indiegogo going because he's got to source the materials, which again, getting pigments in the art world is a crazy difficult thing. So I'm so rooting for him. Let me show you how I made my deer. Of course, there's a traceable. Information is in the description below and in the comments. You can go check out the Indiegogo and you can go check out the deer if you want to paint along, get one of these and paint along. Let's see what I did with these really fabulous new color sheets. So the thing I did first was to create the design of my deer and transfer it onto the paper. I started looking at the color sheets, decided to make a color key code. That's where you take little swatches of the colors just in case what is dry looks different on paper than it did in the palette. I grabbed my Cron d'Ache thumb palette and that was because I wanted to mix my colors out of this color booklet and onto a palette and that was just a nice way for me to hold both the pad and my mixing colors at the same place. I started looking in my deer for my first values. I like to work my watercolors from my lightest value to my darkest value. I think that's very important. And I think it's also important for watercolor artists to hold as much of the white paper as they can, to be as fresh and open as they can. As an acrylic painter, that's an area that sometimes I tend to get heavy handed in. And so it's wonderful in watercolors to do this because it reminds me to stay opened up and light. The blue was blowing my mind on this. I really loved it. My first impression was, is that these reminded me almost of inks or dyes. Um, the way that, you know, sometimes very uh, fresh flower colors can be when you press them out. So I really got into my yellow ochres first and my golds, just kind of putting in this baby deer and thinking about how I wanted this to be a very high hat design, meaning that I wanted it to not have a lot of deep values. In acrylic, I tend to work with a very deep shadow set, get very broad range. But in watercolor, you kind of want to go the opposite way. I had these little sprigs of grass coming up, and I allowed the gold and the green to blend together on the brush, which it did really beautifully. I'm not really glazing at this point. Glazing refers to when you allow the paint to completely dry and then do another transparent color over it. I'm sort of doing some glazing, but a lot of it is wet into wet. And I want that. I want those edges to soften. I want to play those balances between the um, hard edges and the soft edges. I'll be sure and put down here all the colors that I used in um, the description below. So if you wanted to duplicate this, though I would say with this particular product, be about as whimsical as you could be. Um, with the thumb palette and the pad, I found it actually, it looks uncomfortable, but it was actually incredibly comfortable to work. In fact, I'm considering taking this on my upcoming trip um, and to ClamorCon to use it because I just think it was a really fun material and I'm kind of now a hooked fan and a fan of Aditya, just generally saying I'm a fan. Definitely go by and check out the Indiegogo if you're interested in being a participant in something new in the art world. Um, so here I'm just still putting in the deer and you can see just keeping it light, keeping it mellow. The whole time I was doing this, I was literally fighting the need, just the deep need 
to get like inks out and start inking it in. I mean, I just wanted to so bad. It's such an inclination in me. And I was like, no, I'm going to stay fresh. I'm going to stay light. Um, and I think in everything in art, as artists, we have areas that we tend to lean heavily on. And it's always good to take on a project or do something that asks a little more of us. Um, so you can see I'm really holding, holding, holding the white. Um, keeping those spots out on the fawn's coat and keeping that center neck out. I'm also being really kind of crazy and expressive with the line, putting in the eyes. And then now I'm starting to add these darker values. And this is where I'm glazing now. And the product did glaze just fine. Um, as long as it was really dry, I didn't really have any problems glazing it. Um, comparably, I felt like the saturation was just super vivid. I think that's where it, I kept feeling through this. I didn't, the colors did not muddy easily, which was nice. Um, it was a well uh, curated collection of colors. Oftentimes, I find um, in products like this that I, I am really unhappy with some of the colors. And this one, I didn't have that experience at all. I found I was literally very happy with every color that was in there. Um, and I found the colors to be warm and luminous, which was super exciting to me. And I think reflected in the fawn. And I thought this was actually kind of, I ended up by the end of this feeling, this was a really great project to do for spring. So you can see I'm laying in the eyes, resisting, resisting with my whole mind to black line. I'm getting some, I'm glazing some of the darker blue on these little blue bells and coming in with some warmer tones around the ears. The slate color was really nice to tip those ears with and make this feel like you caught this fawn in a beam of sunlight, I think really was what I was going for. Um, just pulling the darker little hair values there and starting to resolve the nose, but again, and just glazing because I know it's gonna lighten up. It's going to chill out. Be sure and check out the traceable if you want to do this at home. I'm absolutely happy for you to do that or you can freehand it. Um, it was a fun project for me to do. It was a fun product. I think it's something that um, if it makes it to market, I would definitely um, purchase. It's something I would give as a gift and I would definitely purchase. So that's a nice takeaway. Um, pretty much I well, wouldn't talk about it unless I liked it. That's sort of like my thing at the point you see a video because these are kind of hard to make. <laughs> I have to like something a little bit. Um, I'm doing a little splash off the side here, and it's kind of like a grass, a splash, to, to imply that we found this little creature sort of laying down. I really enjoyed getting to look at this. This was a lot of fun for me. Um, a couple of notes that I'll say. A lot of people were like, oh, the water brush for this. I personally wouldn't use a water brush for this. I'm going to use my travel brush. This is my number eight travel brush and I really like it. I, I wanna offload my pigment all the time when I'm working. So that's my two cents where I kind of differed maybe in my artistic preferences. And that's really all it is. It's not like a right or wrong, it's just an artistic preference. I like my Voyage, that's my go-to. And you can see both of these would go with the small pad or Yupo paper easily in my purse, which I liked. Um, I definitely liked my thumb palette for that. And I do think for this, it's nice to be able to have a place to mix. The colors had great mixability. And um, I'm just gonna wish, wish Aditya luck in this journey. It, it, I hope to see um, him at the Art Material Show in the future, because I think it's, it's a brave thing to do. And good luck, I'm rooting for you. Go check out uh, the Traceable and the Indiegogo, and I'm gonna see you guys at the Easel really soon. Bye bye